Our next author is Matthias Navrat. Matthias Navrat was born in Poland and at the age of 10 moved with his family to Bamberg in Germany. After studying biology in Freiburg and Heidelberg, he enrolled in the Swiss Institute of Literature in Biel. His debut novel, Wir zwei allein, Just the Two of Us, appeared in 2012. The same year, he was honored with the Kellogg Prize at the Ingeborg Bachmann Prize Competition. Matthias Navrat has won a number of prizes, including the MDR Literature Prize, the Bern Literature Prize, as well as the Adalbert von Hamiso Prize. And last year, he was awarded the Bavarian Radio Wordplay Festival Prize, which comes with a residency at the Villa Aurora in California. So he gets to go there and uh, march and thaw out a little bit. His second novel, Entrepreneurs, Unternehmer, um, which is unfortunately not translated in full, is both a pointed satire of our excessively economized world and a bittersweet coming-of-age story. The Rame family ekes out a precarious existence in an economically devastated black forest by collecting electronic and industrial waste, which they sort into scrap or boil in sulfuric acid to extract metals and valuable raw materials. They sell whatever they retrieve to the owner of Paradise, which is the, who is the local junk dealer, for some loose change or jingle money, as uh, you'll become significant later. Uh, no sacrifice is too great for their dream of emigrating to New Zealand, which they imagine is paradise on Earth. But the competition is close and is gaining on them. Every day, instead of going to school, the 13-year-old narrator, Lipa, and her 11-year-old brother, Bertie, Bertie f set off with their father in, say, in search of saleable waste, and they jockey with each other for the position of worker of the month. But Lipa is also falling hard for lanky, long-nosed Timo, who has, ha and has to choose between loyalty to her family and to her heart. Uh, most remarkable about uh, Matthias's novel is Lipa's language. Growing up in the bubble of her family's obsessions, she speaks with a poetic mixture of slightly off-kilter neologisms, childish enchantment, and jaded bureaucraties. And you'll get a taste of this in the excerpt um, that will be read today, beautifully translated by Edna McCowan. Thanks. Um, I read the second chapter, the beginning of the second chapter. Am Abend sitzen wir mit Vater im Keller und machen Kochwäsche extra. Top secret. Es ist nicht leicht, die Herzen von den Hüllen zu befreien. In der Schwefelsäure schwitzen die Kupferspulen und Platinen Panzer aus Luftbläschen aus. Wenn Vater die Brillenmaske anzieht und mit den rosa Handschuhen die rattrigen Summenden ins Laugebad hebt, dann fängt das an zu sprudeln und eine Etage gelber Dampf steigt unter die Decke und es riecht wie beim Hirschen im Dorf, wenn man auf die Toilette geht. Die Nase ist umgestülpt und hängt wie ein Handschuh über den Mund. Aber wie schimmert das schön, wenn die grünen und blauen Augen sichtbar werden und wie es knistert, wenn das Sprudeln aufgehört hat, senkt Berti den Schmetterlingsrüssel ins Aquarium, der schmatzend sich verdreht und windet, bis er endlich röchelnd auf dem Glasboden liegen bleibt. Vater legt die öligen Herzen auf Backblechen aus und stellt den Herd an. Während wir warten, spielen wir lange Wörter. Kationen Austauscher Harz, sagt Berti. Molybden Oxidkonzentrat, sagt Vater. Ammonium Heptamolybdrathydrierungsverfahren, sage ich und trage mir drei Punkte ein. Danke. Father has given police Sentinel Stengel some jingle money to go over to Reese's Bakery across the street so that we'll have the factory to ourselves. A soft knocking sound is coming from the duct, in front of which Bertie has now assumed his entrepreneur position. Father puts his ear against the rusted hood and looks at me, and then I also hear the whoosh of the rotors that keep the air moving. Now, Father says, and Bertie, our officiary, has already disappeared up to his shoulder, one turn with the screwdriver, a second one, and his arm is free again. 
and in his hand he swings loose tentacles of copper wiring in a battle to the finish. The heart, top, secret. Father has stretched open the plastic bag. Bertie drops the wiring into it to join the other items that are vibrating, clacking, fizzing. Keep going, Father calls. And Bertie, his eyes wide, his lips gleaming in the glow of my flashlight, has already reached his arm, his lovely white arm, up to his shoulder in the next duct. Father calls. Father listens to the knocking sounds behind the rusted panzer, top secret, and calls. Now, and Bertie lurches forward, then to one side, and tears the next heart from its home. And if the workers return one day after all, I ask, when we're finally outside again, maybe that wouldn't be so bad, Father says, and looks up into the mountains of the black forest that ring the meadow and gift us with birdsong. Then he walks to the Mercedes with heavy steps, and I, too, feel sorry for our Bertie. But then, at the end of the business day, as Bertie served up a cup of black tea at the entrance to the Ravenna Gorge, what a lot of sweat he must wipe from his forehead. And how he has to get his breathing under control, as if he had just raced across a finish line. And I'm to pull his chair out for him in the beer garden, hand him a paper towel and fan him with applause. But for the strong man, but for the accomplished, he says. But for the oily fishing skills of the evisceration special. And what about the assignments? I ask, and hold the lists in front of his nose. The recon of the valleys? The inventories of our reserves and the customer inquiries? None of it worth a thing but for the nimble, Bertie says. None of it worth a thing without finger eyes and their heart hunger. None of it worth a thing but for the quick and supple hand. That's enough now, Father says, returning from the john. We're rolling around in the gravel. He pulls me off of my brother. A glass of coffee liqueur for each, but don't tell Mama, Father says. Entrepreneurship, he says, late in the Mercedes as we reach Wiedner Eck, is teamwork for a team of three. Make note of that. If even just one of us drops out, it's over. Next spring we'll be in New Zealand, Bertie says. Father looks at the road ahead and doesn't say anything more. One whole bag of the best circuit boards one with coils like insects, one with little rotors, classy, trembling, clattering, humming, and how the bags are softly clacking, our booty for the day. <laughs>